everybody. Welcome back to an exciting episode of Hello Life WTF. I am Perry Johnson. I am Lindsay Johnson. And I am Matt Sanderson. Welcome to the third annual live stream for The Cure. I'm Matt Sanderson, co-host of Nooks and Crannies. Before I get into all the details of what I have planned here, I wanted to give a big thanks to all the podcasters who are participating directly or helping out with some shares on social media. It all makes a big difference, but especially, of course, big thanks to the Epic Film Guys for putting this all together. I made a playlist to go along with this segment, so if you can, pull up Spotify, okay? search for Nooks and Crannies, no hyphens, and find our profile. Under there, you'll see a playlist entitled Livestream 3.0 for Periberry, Linz, and The Cure. Once you find it, hit play at some point, and it should sync up with this segment, like a trippy Pink Floyd Wizard of Oz type situation. Also, I included extra songs, so if you don't like the one you are currently listening to, especially maybe the first one, which, by the way, is a special inclusion from Lindsay directly, and I know Perry would have approved of it, uh, feel free to skip forward. What you're about to hear is highlights of an interview I recorded for them back in late August 2018. The full-length interview is available in Nooks and Crannies' feed, by the way. Um, So this interview was intended to be the last episode of Hello Life WTF. What none of us realized was that it ended up being Perry's last recording. I'll explain the process better in the intro to the interview, which I will play now, but trigger warning, folks, I blubber and sob like the sad little boy that I was when I recorded it days before Perry passed away. Thanks again for having me on the third annual live stream for The Cure. Uh, it really, really means a lot to me. Howdy folks, Maddie here. Um, this is the hardest thing I've had to record, hands down. And listening back to the interview you are about to hear has been a mixed bag of emotions. Whole bunch of inspiration for sure, but you can hear the dread and fake positivity in my voice as well. I'm not going to lie, this is a tough listen. So I was thinking yesterday that this interview right here is sort of like the best thing I have ever done with my education, which was in medical anthropology, by the way. I only note this here as I tried in this interview to maintain a certain amount of distance, which is very common in anthropology as it allows you to ask the tough and honestly the impolite questions, which are the ones that result in the best and the kind of realist responses. So Lindsay and Perry hosted Hello Life, WTF, and the Pod Stuff podcast. Uh, the Pod Stuff actually featured Maddie's Corner, which, um, side note, <laughs> Lindsay, when you asked me to do these segments, I was absolutely floored and humbled, uh, nervous even. Some of my worst recordings ever were on the Pod Stuff podcast, <laughs> but weirdly, it was one of the more fulfilling experiences I've had in podcasting, and it really helped build my confidence as a podcast personality. Um, But anywho, I am clearly avoiding um, the inevitable topics. So let's all capitalize on our time. Let's all do better. And if I can make a special request, um, let's all love each other a little bit more. The world needs more Perry and Lindsay's. I love that Going to California is playing right now. A nice sweet song about loss and revival. I love how music can evoke a plethora of emotions. That's the Johnsons in a nutshell, really. A plethora of emotions. Here they are, humorously describing the experience of finding out. Maybe some new listeners in on uh, what you've been up to the last four months. I got cancer. Oh, Boom. (laughs) Mic drop. (laughs) I mean, really, though, it kind of, we say four months because, you know, he was diagnosed on May 2nd, but this kind of all started back in February when he didn't, like, really feel very well. And I remember recording and we would talk about he just didn't feel right and then but he was traveling and we didn't all these doctor's appointments and had tests done and everything was negative and but then it just all went downhill on April twenty seventh. And yeah, then, we went we yeah. went and saw Avengers. Yeah, we went to the movies before he went to work that day and then that night I threw up blood. But he said it was Ooh. candy. I thought maybe it was candy. What kind of candy did you have? Mentos. Mentos. So that's not really even like color specific. Yeah, no. I can see. Well, maybe the, the, the shards, like you're just like pounding the mentos. Just like, and they like cut it up down. Well, I didn't have any glasses on and it woke me up in the middle of the night. So yeah. I was like, maybe this is mentos. 
that was like a Friday night. And then Saturday, he was like, oh, I'm good. Went to work. That night, he thought he needed to like throw up, but he never did. And then went to work on Sunday. And then Sunday night was was pretty bad. Yeah, and Sunday he definitely night. Like, there's, knew. No, there's no candy there. <laughs> he definitely mm. knew. And then we went to the emergency room that next morning. They did a CT scan, and I was like, all right, so high little hernia. And they're like, a little one. But you also have this mass, and it's pretty big. Fuck. What That's did that put him in the hospital? <laughs> if I can ask, like, like, how did that feel, Barry? Like, like to get that news. Like, what it, was that feeling inside like? It was. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be dramatic about it, but it, be dramatic. It was, it's okay. It was just one of those things where it's like you, you know how you, they say your life changes in a split second. I mean, it was literally like getting kicked in the gut. I was like, I have yeah. a what? Are you saying cancer? Is this what we're talking? Because they wouldn't say the word. Because we were in the emergency room still. And so they were kind of like, they didn't want to make the official, you, you know how, yeah, yeah. I mean, they Naming still wanted it to, is yes. diagnosing it. Yeah. Right. And, and they're so, not oncologists. They're right. like emergency room physicians. Right? They were kind of like beating around the bush and stuff. But, you know, for us, we're like, just just say it just if that's what you think just tell us Mm. and was it important to for you Lindsay, to have the the name attached to it like that diagnosis or like how how did that work like from um, that point on like i think so because still when when they tell you that you know that biopsies haven't been done you don't have official results yet you don't have you know specifics of anything yet and so you're still kind of, I know for me personally, I'm still thinking they could be wrong. Um, this this could be something totally different. And um, I, I don't think it was until they put like the actual name to it that I came real. I, yeah, I, I think that's when that's when my breakdown happened. <laughs> and was it the same for you, Perry? Or was it more the moment when they said like growth or mass I didn't, or whatever they my the break they use. sorry my breakdown happened whenever the doctor finally confirmed it and yeah. like told me straight up you could we could just make you comfortable or we could treat Jesus, but this really? is yeah like right wow. out of the gate whoa and, yeah, and i'm like like some shivers man and i was like what what do you mean make me comfortable that's stupid <laughs> we haven't even tried yet but it, it was the feeling that kept coming that Maybe it, it was my whole life, my body has been under my control as far as I know. And for they could have told me, and, and I, they kind of did, that this is going to kill me eventually. Yeah. And it made it sound like I had this no power in it whatsoever. Like, like and, your and, agency is gone. Like yeah. your, your control, yeah. And that's been almost the whole time. I mean, I did radiation, and is it working? I don't know, but I have to lay on this table and get zapped and then feel like total ass for the next few days, except, oh, it's happening again tomorrow. And this whole time, it's like I have no control over anything. And I've never had that feeling before. I've never been sick. That was his first time ever to be admitted in the hospital. Caregivers are underappreciated academically, and socially. And for this reason, I wanted the conversation to revolve around Lindsay as well, bringing her experience as a caregiver forward by providing a safe platform to expand. I wanted to take a second to recognize my caregiving wife, Melanie. Thank you for everything you do for us, love. How has this affected your marriage, um, positively and negatively? For me, and, and I just, we kind of, during a discussion today I said it for the first time out loud but she has no idea the loyalty that I have to her after this experience has grown tremendously even though I would I feel like I was already loyal to her but no questions asked I mean this is my girl she has been every single thing that I've needed since I got sick and selflessly so um it's hard to get upset with her when she has her bad days because she's had 
so much of her existence tied into keeping me healthy or keeping the trains moving on time or keeping notes from the doctor or making sure that I have my medicine when I'm supposed to have it or just the everything that the everything that she does and you know I mean she's working double time and I'm sleeping on the couch 90% of it and there's no bitterness or no anger expressed to me she's my hero she was already my hero but now she's my goddamn hero I don't know any other way to say it I mean she is <laughs> I'm feeling that same way about Lindsay like I'm, I really like like I, I think you're really noble. <laughs> like it's, it's really heroic what you're doing. I agree. And I would, like, I would be dead. Like it's crazy. Like I, like I got a lot of respect for you, Perry. You're fighting your ass off, but like, Lindsay, um, like you deserve a lot of credit. When I do have my moments or my bad days or, you know, things like that. I mean, it's, I'm pretty good at faking a smile when I'm out in public, but at home. You know, I mean, I can be pretty good at it at home, too. But I think my either tiredness or frustrations and all that is shown a lot more at home than it would be outside of the house. Is there, um, Perry, is there some things you feel guilty about? Because guilt is a pretty common uh, feeling uh, for both those with the illness and those who are caring for. It's very typical for caregivers to feel guilt and not being able to do more, not being able to fix things. I think Linz explains this better than I can. Then we'll hear from Perry describing the necessity of living in the moment. Like, where did you learn how to do all these things and also, I guess, deploy them in selective ways? Uh, um, it's a meaty question, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Take a I bite mean, out of that burger, Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one... Um, Taco, rather. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. And two, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just, I grew up um, with both of my parents who struggled with several different things. And I, I saw growing up, you know, if my mom was in the hospital, my dad, you know, he he just picked picked up where where she would have and did whatever needed to be done. And she, you know, and he was there to, take care of her and us and in the same way with you know if my dad was in the hospital my mom did the same thing and so I think it was just kind of seeing that growing up and then I guess personal things that I've been through in my life where when somebody else is hurting or they need something or it's just kind of that part of me that I feel like I have to I have to fix it. And although I know I can't fix it, I know that I can do something. Um, so how do you kind of live within the first the moment while also trying to be hopeful for the future? I'll go first because mine's a simple answer. I don't have a sure. choice. I mean, I just spin my brain around everything. That Do you have trouble with that? Very Like there's the constantly like the, the gears are going? Yeah. Right now I have anyway, because I, I just, for me, like I, part of me feels like my fate is set. My, I have, like I said, X amount of time left, whether that be five years, 10 years, 15 years, but I need to make sure that my family is in a good place. Financially is the biggest concern right now. So for me, I spend my head around all of that a lot. And then realize that right now I have no control over anything. So then I'm able to just start thinking about like tomorrow or later today or what I'm going to eat for dinner tonight or, you know, whatever that may be. And is that a relief for you? No, because I know that it's going to come back. <laughs> All right. So Perry was one of the funnier people I have ever met. Just effortless in his humor. A non-joke telling funny man. And boy, howdy, did he nail the dark humor. And hot dang. It made Lindsay uncomfortable. He yeah, also expresses it, though, in, like, with his joking ways. Hmm. But I know that it's, like, even when he expresses it, stuff jokingly, I know that it's stuff that goes through his head. Hmm. So. Because that's his process, right? Like, 
hey Perry, you're nah. still in the room, but like <laughs> we're talking about you right now. But like that is your your process, and I call it um, self deprecating humor. Uh, mm-hmm. It's my my dark black humor that I don't normally deploy um, around Melanie. Certainly not, and I only do it with like certain friends of mine that have like certain types of illnesses um, oh man i do it everywhere to anybody yeah, other yeah but i've also had my condition for like 20 years <laughs> so like i'm also a veteran of having a chronic illness right so like oh so you're this, throwing this numbers on me now, huh? gonna, yeah so you're, like you're better than me ding ding like uh, there's my championship belt right there <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm a concussion champ uh but but like i have found that like all right, folks, this is the heavier section. They speak about absence in a couple of ways, both in friends and family who have pulled back for various reasons, and how they try to explain Perry's impending absence to their kids. Do you want to go? No, first go ahead. Or? No, okay. go ahead. Um, to me, the surprising generosity of the, the people that, and especially from the podcast community, and and there's some people from my previous work, too, that, they just, I mean, we have survived for since three May. months. Yeah, since May with no income. And there has been donations and there's been fundraisers and there has been, you know, people just showing up and handing us checks and getting checks in the mail. And it has been. We've gotten cards from people we don't know. Yeah, it is. Wow. It's been really cool. And then, you know, the other side of it is there are people that disappear. Yeah. Hmm. And. Why do you think that is? I I don't know if it's because they don't, they don't, they're not in a place where they can contribute. Mm. So they feel guilty and remove themselves from it. Like financially contribute? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Or, you know, it's just they don't know what to say or do. So kind of. They just pull away. Yeah. And I mean, that's whatever. And I I don't think anybody knows what to say or do. And so we don't. Yeah, I, I, like I, I had to take like I, you know, honestly, I've I haven't listened to like your last episode of the show. I I just can't. Like I, I tried to start, and I was just like, no, nah, no, I can't. Like, and you guys, like, were, there was some laughing in there and stuff. I was just like, I can't. Um, but then it's just like I also can't pull away, and I I knew there was something that I could have done, but I also have learned through my own experiences with illness guys like i i I try not to judge those sorts of actions and people pulling away or not knowing what to say and stuff like that um because sometimes those same people will figure it out later and then hit you with like the most funny gif ever (laughs) because like like i know perry loves cheesy music and um and he loves to laugh so I knew that, that those are two things that I could offer. You have the, I mean, but all very unexpected, you know? And so, I, like, in a situation like this, it's almost, I could see where somebody would start to pull away now so that it wouldn't hurt as bad, maybe, if something happens. You know what I mean? And some people would see this as a positive, but... Again, just because of me and my personal experiences, it's it's a negative and something that annoys me the most is when things like this happen and people who haven't been around for years and years and years show up. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. And that's that's really, really, really hard for me. Just, you know, being at my dad's funeral or my mom's funeral or my sister's funeral and you you know and it's not necessarily it's just I have a hard time with that because I'm like if you haven't cared for so many years why do you care now they're they're handling it okay but I think um I think a lot of that has to do with keeping norm some normalcy around here um there have been you know there obviously there have been changes and they know that he hasn't been working and he went through a period where he couldn't even talk 
Um, and, and so they know, but they know, they know what's going on. We do have conversations with them. We do talk to them. We do have the tough, tough conversations with them. Um, they have their moments for sure. And I think if I had to say anybody was struggling the hardest with it, I would probably say Aubrey, a nine-year-old. Um, she has, she has really, I don't know if that's like a girl thing because like, she's a little bit more sensitive and, or she's just kind of at that age or, or maybe she's like you and she wants to try to fix the situation. Right. She doesn't know how. Um, like she had, she made the comment one night, um, she said, I, I would rather, cause we always say, well, at least daddy's home, you know, this is the first summer he's been home with the kids all summer long. And so we always kind of say that. And she said, I, I would rather, you know, him be going to work and feel okay than see him sick all the time. Yeah. I mean, just let me be super dramatic Joe for a minute. Please do. But I don't know how many more I get to see of whatever. Hmm. So, or how many more they get to have me at. So any opportunity that I can, I want to. That includes taking them to school in the morning. You know, every morning, <laughs> Lindsay's like, are you coming? And I want to say no every morning. Every morning, yeah. But, but I'm like, like heck yeah. yeah. Heck yeah, I'm coming. Cause... Coming with you. <laughs> but uh, I, it is important for me to be a part of their lives as much as I possibly can. Because, you know, either way, I go back to work. And all of a sudden, I'm not as part, big a part of their life as what I have been. Even sick, I'm not going to get to see them as much. Okay, we're about to hear them thank all of you who were there before, during, and afterwards. And in very classy fashion, they did not name names. So, all you podcasters out there, don't think you're going to leech any downloads off this, you little heartless vultures. <laughs> Sorry. But I will name a few names. Originally, this segment was supposed to be a collaboration between myself, Adam Higgins from the Odd Dad Out podcast, Chris Osborne from the beloved Play Comics podcast, and Paul, don't you dare call me Cosmo, Chomo, from everyone's favorite kid-friendly animal show, Varmints. But due to scheduling conflicts and multiple brain injuries sustained by yours truly, I had to make a little pivot. Paul, Adam, and Chris, in no particular order, were present, consistent, and empathetic through the months of Perry's illness. Just wanted to formally thank you all for that. And also, of course, Amy Derrick, co-host of the 1096, so that's 10-96, Crime Chicks podcast, and real-life BFF to Lindsay. She was my personal communications channel through this whole time. I just wanted to thank you, Amy, for never making me feel awkward for asking for an update, especially near the end. And of course, again, thank you to the Epic Film guys for organizing all this. But how about we just hear from the Johnsons? Friends, if you wanted to say something to the independent podcast community, your friends and family, um, or maybe just the strangers that have sent you those uh, cards with some cash in it, uh, now's your kind of chance to do so. And that's hard because, you know, all you want to do is just say thank you, but it just does not, it, it doesn't does, capture it, does it, it doesn't seem like enough. There's, no. there's just no way you name it. Um, we've, we've had some pretty amazing people behind us the entire way from day one and people that were there already. I mean, the podcast community didn't just show up when he got cancer, you know, uh, they've been around <laughs> podcasters have been around since we have and have shown us all kinds of love and support and it has just continued nonstop throughout this whole thing and I don't yeah you know, I don't know what we would do without the support that we do have out there and how about you Perry ditto <laughs> <laughs> no I you know to speak to what Lindsay said the people that, like the core people that have held us up, we didn't even know a year ago. Or barely knew. Yeah. And it just means the world. And it, it's inspiring that this community could pull together for us like they have. 
And it's it makes me proud to be a part of that community. And it makes me not be able to just, I cannot wait to be on the other side of that with the great people in this community trying to help lift somebody else up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's been, it's been amazing. And the people that we don't know that sent cards. Oh, and gosh. It's crazy. The churches that have donated out of nowhere. My first thought is always, how they get our address? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Actually, but that was my first thought, too. But, no, I'm like, Wait a but minute. some people, no, a lot of people Churches do. Churches are strangers, yeah. eh? <laughs> okay. A lot of people will make a note, like, we go to church with so-and-so, or, yeah. and it's just kind of, it's just that thing, and I'm like, wow. I mean, the card we got today was, like, from Missouri, you know, and I'm like, wow. oh, well, that's okay. Listening to over and over again. You know, one of the fun things that you just sent us yesterday but True by Spando Ballet. Spando Ballet. <laughs> that might be um, the very first mixtape I made, Lindsay. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Because like 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's something about that song that, um, yeah, I just like, I could see you guys like dating. And like, <laughs> <laughs> it's that, it's that and kick ass like, saxophone solo that brings it all together. <laughs> well, of course, right? It's like um, Mad Max Part One, like the very first one. They <laughs> yeah. just there's like a strange sax solo in the middle of that, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> night, you guys will have to watch that together. <laughs> so, what are some other uh, tunes that have been that have been resonating with you too? You know what's funny is it's been more silence than anything. Really? Like not. Like Simon and Garfunkel, The Sound of Silence? No. no. Oh, no. Okay. Not like no. Because I can music sing that and if stuff. you like. <laughs> I won't. You can. Prop me up beside the jukebox when I'm gone. I think that's. <laughs> yeah, he's done that one. <laughs> um, and do you find, though, Perry, uh, maybe because um, I know you're the more the music y guy, maybe. I don't know. Um, do songs take on different meanings now? Well, there's a whole list of this huge playlist that I made for chemo that I'll always think about chemo when I listen to. Mm. But, you know, I've always said that the love of music comes from context. context. And you could hear a song and it means nothing to you and then you get the right, the right story behind it and it's your theme song for the rest of your life. And, you know, there's just, there's a lot of songs that are almost going to be like victory songs for me coming out of this now (laughs) with my, excuse me, with my treatment being as successful as it's been to this point. That's, that's awesome. Um, For me lately, I don't know why, but it's that Erasure song, A Little Respect. Every single morning, man. And it, it entirely relates to my experiences with, by and large, most people in the medical community. Like, just, like, they just don't give me any respect. And it's just like, <laughs> give me some freaking respect. Like, I, I feel like I'm really, like, slugging it out over here. <laughs> like, I think I'm really doing well. Um, just but listen. I just feel like I don't get respect. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, and there's another one um, that I've been just listening to a lot lately, um, and I haven't posted it on your social media yet, but um, Tracy Chapman, Baby I Can Hold You. Um, God, it's a cheesy song, but I love it. I just, I picture myself in karaoke singing that, like, really, really well uh, to Melanie, of course, and um, not screwing up any lines. So that's that's what I've been listening to lately. <laughs> Make sure you get it down so you don't even have to look at the this- don't even have to look at the TV whenever you're singing it, um, karaoke style. There's only one way to do karaoke, my friend, and it is reading the... my way. All right, folks, this is the last time I'm going to jump in. I just wanted to thank Perry and Lindsay. Your lessons around relationships and friendship, happiness and being okay with sadness, how to be subtle in supporting loved ones, honesty, and, well, I could go on. But you know what's funny? Neither one of them has ever given me explicit advice. They just happen to be some of the most loving people I've ever met. And Perry, I'm going to miss the shit out of you, man. Much love, big fella. And as I insist on saying on nooks and crannies, and as an homage to Perry Berry, we'll talk to y'all soon. 